Hey there, Annabelle and Sarah here at Navigating the Shift. Welcome along back to the politics just for a little while and then we'll probably do a second video on uh, more timely topics. Uh, timeless topic. Well, they're not really timeless, are they? It's more about the new epoch, the new world, and what your job will be. So we'll get to that later. But first, the news was what we've been the looking news. at. First, the news. Dun, dun, dun. We were it's looking everywhere. <laughs> impeachment. <laughs> ah, impeachment. So we'll talk about impeachment and also some an, an interesting video that Sarah found about climate change and those stupid, stupid carbon credits. But first, impeachment. Let's look at those. Impeachment. Good luck with that. <laughs> I, I still think it, it's been set up by Trump's team in order to... To make to... them look like idiots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then, okay, so the thing that came out recently is the form that whistleblowers fill out was changed, supposedly... A few days in before. August, although the, um, the data... Ab- behind it. What is it called? The, the metadata said it was actually changed in September. So that it's like they re- retroactively did it and they're trying to sneak something in. So that means that hearsay is acceptable, right? So w- w- the speculation going around is like, well, wait a minute. Can, can anybody now start using hearsay? That's crazy. I mean, that means right? you and I can Any- go in and say, now I heard that this was something that was going on and that can make us an official right. whistleblower. That's ridiculous. Yes, and and think about it. The people who are following Q, this is what I heard <laughs> that this was going on. You know that that you know, this is what Q said. I mean, can you imagine? It's just ridiculous. Yeah. It, it uh, it's got to uh, be people that are there, that are into it, that have firsthand knowledge. It's got to be those people. They're the only ones that can give an accurate account. Yeah, and the the fact that they're saying okay, we are officially in an inquiry, but they're they're not going any further than that is because that prevents Trump side from taking any forward action and starting to get information from them. It's just it blows my mind how much uh, wasted time the whole last 3 years all Congress has done is sat there and tried to get rid of Trump. We're paying them to to make laws and stuff. To govern know? the it's, country. It's, yeah. We're, is nobody governing the country? Yeah. I suppose and opposition question, have less chance to do that, but they still run the lower house, don't they? So there must be things that they need to be doing on those meetings other than just bitching about Trump all the time. Yeah. And and then, of course, the, the Republicans in the House have to – they spend all their time trying to defending. contradict what – yeah, it's it's uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, and you know, it's, it's also very dangerous because it's, it's separating our country. People are getting really volatile about this. I am afraid it's going to actually break into an actual civil war. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Of course, is, is a, a physical war. I mean, we are at a civil, at, are in a civil war actually, but, uh, Cold War was how it was described, wasn't it? It's not, not violent right. at the moment. However, Antifa seems to be very keen on stirring up some violence wherever possible. Uh, You know, that video that came out about them um, hassling the poor woman trying to cross the road to get into an event and screaming in her face. These people, uh, they have their faces blocked, so you're not meant to know who they are, but they're the same people that show up all the time. Amazing Polly did. That's right, where I saw it. She did an article. She's, poor thing, because she's such a good researcher and the more she researches, the more pissed off she gets, the more upset she gets. So she's taking a bit of time off at the moment. But um, yes. she, she found like one particular guy, for example, and she thought she'd follow wherever she could find him. He was everywhere. He's a Syrian immigrant and he just shows up at all the protests and stirs up all the trouble with the Antifa guys, I think. It's for like part of Antifa. And wow. she said, I've, I've never seen someone... So ungrateful, so unbelievably ungrateful to now you know stir up trouble in a country that's just given him what do you call it sanctuary or whatever. Um, it's so ridiculous. So who are the other people behind the masks and why you know they're paid? They're paid to make trouble because if they push hard enough, someone will punch them, and then they've got violence. Oh, <gasps> you can see the Trump supporters or whoever they seem to be arguing against whatever event they're in front of are violent people, yeah, because you were already screaming in their face. Right. Yeah, so be wary of them. They're, all, they're controlled. 
the same way that I think the Proud Boys are controlled. You know, it's just designed to try to build more and more antagonism between the, the two groups, trying to separate, separate people. But the reality is I think most people in this country are centrists. Or, you know, closer to center, those those far end, left and right, that's not True really a majority of people. That's right. Uh, something kind of funny was um, Rosie, is Rosie O'Donnell, and ah, I can't think of the name. Another fam- uh, well-known, famous um, left-wing person did polls. And one of them said, um, do you think that uh, Trump should be impeached? And the the final poll came back 57%. No, 43%, yes. And then they deleted the tweet, right, because they didn't get what they wanted. And then the other one was, was uh, do you think that Trump is doing his his job, basically? And that came back also, yes, we think, yeah, he really is, <laughs> rather than no. And, and I think that's even, you know, even with all the shadow banning going on on Twitter and the other social media pl- platforms, I mean, if, and, and then also on one of them, it was like, Within an hour of it first going out, there was like 70,000, you know, against Trump votes. I was like, wait a minute. How did those get in there so fast? So um, even with all the shadow banning and the censorship, people are people are waking up. I mean, uh, Martin Gaddis, who is um, he's great, intelligent and an incredible photographer. If you're on Twitter, follow him. He's he's very fun. Uh, But he wrote something that is true. It's like, you know. You hear about people coming around that are waking up. They're they're finding Q and going, "Oh my God, I didn't know this was going on." You know, the, the walk away movement, which is the Democrats walking away from the, from the Democrats, the Democratic Party, mm. right? Um, he says, "But you don't hear about people going the other way." You know, he's like, "I'm really interested, and in, I'm going to check out Q. I'm going to learn all this stuff over here." No, nah. I'm going to go back to the <laughs> other side. You know, nobody does it. <laughs> Unless no. they're scared to see what they're seeing, you know, the um, the cognitive dissonance we've talked about before, unless they, it's just too appalling to imagine. But I yeah. think, yeah, it's it's connecting with so many more people. So I think um, now well, we had a meeting uh, with the Ring Cedars group last week. This is the, the books I was telling you about, the Russian books, which I believe will make the whole new movement of a new way of life, connecting back to nature, uh, local governing bodies governing themselves and listening to children because they're more in tune to their intuition, all this kind of stuff, to- totally different way of life. Um, that I believe that will be the start of that movement, those original books. I'll put a picture up on the screen of what they look like. Okay. Ring- Ringing Cedar Series. The first eight books are the ones, the most important ones that have been um, written by a Russian guy who was like a, a merchant trader. And he came across this amazing advanced spiritual woman living in the Siberian forest who taught him incredible things. And you could see even his writing style changed as you went through the books. He's so clumsy and he's so materialistic and fought against her so much at the beginning and then learnt slowly as he went along. Still not perfect, of course. Yeah, but it's it's really lovely. Uh, The the woman's name is Anastasia. Anastasia. Um, That's how the Russians say Okay. Anastasia, yeah. So we got into talking in our little meetings. We do a group uh, of uh, you know, people that love those books, um, and we talk about gardens, and we talk about how we can, you know, how can we change politics, or we talk about all sorts of things, but also things into the future stuff, like you and I talk about all the time. And one of them was saying we got into one part of the conversation where we were like, oh my goodness, what do we do about all these people? They're fighting or whatever, and one of them said. We just need to focus on what we want. And it's always the best reminder ever. Focus on what you want. When you see all this stuff about should he be impeached or not impeached, totally focusing on let's just that's just bull crap. Let's just focus on what we want. We want a world at peace. Right? We've had no new wars in the last three years. Have you noticed? You know, uh What else do we want? We want the banks sorted out. We want the corrupt people made accountable. We want all these things sorted. We want a a more fair distribution of currency, not the way that it's it's so um, leaning towards just a few people, maybe 200 people in the world, and all the rest of us miss out um, or, or, or struggle for it. You know, you just totally focus on what you want. And if that's all there is in your individual world, and we do that collectively, 
then the rest kind of either resolves itself or it disappears somehow. Right. Yeah. And what, you know how they say 90% or 80% or whatever, what, what you worry about never comes to happen anyway. You know, it's sort of like the opposite of that. What, what you keep your focus on, don't, you know, the stuff you're not, you don't need to worry about all that stuff. Which, it's in the which news. Is, Who cares? You know, it's not part of your individual personal life. Yeah. Well, you and I both had this experience, maybe it was about three years ago, and neither one of us was were particularly really conspiracy theory persons. You know, we were here to bring light, and that was what we were doing, not go looking to the darkness. And then, unbeknownst to either of us, we both ended up doing this year and a half delve into the deep darkness of satanic abuse and pedophilia and all the other really horrible things. And hated every minute of it, were sick, couldn't sleep. Remember that? Mm. And then around the same time, then we, we realized, oh, you're looking at that too? I don't know why. You know, I hate doing this. And at, at one point, I, w I couldn't sleep another night. And I asked my creator self, I said, okay, you know, what's right about this? One of my favorite questions. And um, it was the answer was, you know, you're done now. You don't have to do that anymore. That you're being able to look at all this dark stuff. And then, like, process the emotions of it, remove some of the negative energy around it, because there's so much shame and fear and horror around it all, um, and dread, you know, all of those, oh, God, horrible feelings. Process it out. Then, one thing, you've pulled a chunk of that out of the collective consciousness, but also that not everybody has to do that. Because right. not everybody can do that and survive. But we need to have a certain percent of the population have awareness of the really dark things. And that's why we went through it. And you, I think, right around the same time as me, also kind of got so that you didn't have to do it so much anymore. Is that right? Is that how you remember? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get a message specifically, but I, I thought, okay, I think I just need to, I just need to understand it. Like I've got beyond the point of, it, you know, leaving me in tears or anything like that or horrified or angry. I mean, it happens every now and then, but um, I've got now to the point of going, okay, this is the worst of it. You know, this is as far as I know. <laughs> and maybe that's all that I'm exposed to. Maybe right. we, each of us are exposed as much as we can handle. <clears throat> like that conveyor belt vision that you had, I never had anything like that with the torture kitties on the conveyor belt lining up for torture I never got anything along those lines I think that um we each get what we can cope with and right. so yeah I kind of understand that now and that there's stuff that needs to come out and it's if you get people that are so completely blind to what's going on yelling in your face you have to kind of you know we've been taught the highest spiritual reaction you can give is compassion and this is Jesus' turn the other cheek, I believe, is what he was kind of meaning. It doesn't mean you allow that person to punch you and punch you in the other cheek. It means um, I understand that this person doesn't know anywhere near as much as me about this topic. And it's not, um, not necessary, like you're saying, to completely enlighten them with what's going on because it might, it might drive them over the edge. It might drive them completely right. crazy. Um, and so... The best thing I can do is to try and soften the blow. It doesn't mean you can punch me in my capillo, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to uh, aggravate the situation. Yeah. It's sort of like what I always say. It's like if you try to give somebody something that they do not want or are not ready to receive, they'll tr give it back to you with daggers attached to and it. And don't so, be offended you know, you, by you that. You don't yeah. want to do that, right? <laughs> so then what's interesting is I've noticed that Following up on that, you and I, who previously didn't give a hoot about politics, suddenly started delving into politics. It's the biggest right show in the universe. Time. It's amazing. Yeah. And and then now we're both kind of going, I'm over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? But every now and then, it, it kind of, I think it'll just kind of spark our interest every now and then, like, yeah, yeah that's moving in the right direction. Oh, oh look, it's going to get exciting. This is going to be great. Yeah. You know, it's, and then it's other times, like, as good things are starting to happen. Let's just go and sit under a tree at the time. Yeah. So I wonder what's next. <laughs> I wonder. Right? Well, let's go back to the climate change thing. So you, you came across this awesome video. Tell us about that one. Yes. This fellow, he's a PhD in biochemistry. I can't remember exactly. Dr. Really Shiva smart. Ayadurai. I'm sorry? Dr. Shiva Ayadurai. 
Oh, right, Dr. Shiva. They call him Dr. Shiva. So uh, he's he did a cute little presentation on a whiteboard with circles, and he says, here's I'm explaining why Trump got out of the, the Paris Climate Accord, because it's a scam. And I never really understood it quite so much before, but now I really get it. So the idea is that certain companies produce certain things, and they produce a certain amount of carbon dioxide. They sell those things to the people. So this is where it is now, right? But the idea is in 2030, which is one of the dates that they all are all talking about, what happens is if those people put out those carbon dioxide, which isn't what causes climate change anyway, but um, so that's why it's a double scam. If they do that, then they have to pay for carbon carbon credits. Like a little little bank account, a little bank account, carbon credits, which means that once they've paid the money, they can keep on doing what they're doing. They don't have to reduce whatever pollution is coming out of their factories. They just keep on doing it. And bottom line, they pass the cost on to us. It's like we're double paying for it. Yeah. And then like for an example, example that Dr. Shiva gave was China is now um, producing, they figure, I mean, I mean, and the other thing is the big carbon polluters are China, India and Russia. Yeah. But they're all going, America has to pay for all of this. Right. And we're like, no, we're actually not the ones that have to pay for it. They need to do it. And they don't want them to get in on the, this accord because it's stupid. But uh, China, for instance, he says, <laughs> produce 11 billion tons of carbon pollution. So in and you can literally see it, right? You can literally see it. People going down the the route with their little masks on. It's appalling. It's not false. I don't it's know pollution. if that's all carbon dioxide. It's, it's a lot. No, of no, pollution. pollution. I mean, it's pollution. Yeah, pollution. Mm. But they're just measuring carbon. You know, this the whole thing is all about carbon. Uh, so in 2030, China is actually still allowed without buying any carbon credits to produce twice as much, 22 billion tons of carbon. Above that, they have to start paying in. And then there's this whole scam that goes around where America was supposed to send a billion dollars and then the lobbyists make sure that they get, you know it gets to, China gets paid and oh my God, it's the most, it's just the way, it's like, a, it's the way politics works. There's always somebody getting bought and paid somewhere. It's a big scam. I had no idea how ridiculous it was. Uh, yeah, I, it never rang true to me, this idea of carbon credits. When they first came out, my my sister's ex-boyfriend started selling them. I think he was like one of the negotiators and he just ended up so, so, so rich. <laughs> my, right. my sister was they really sell, pissed off. They're, they're, on the, like, <laughs> they're like on the commodities market, right? Well, you're and, putting money in. I, I think the idea is that they then they're meant to pay it to people who have trees, but do they do that? That's the question because the people that right. hold all this money in the Paris Accord, he was saying, was Al Gore and right, the exactly. Bushes and like all these familiar names again sitting there in the Paris Accord, waiting for the companies of the world to give them money so that they can keep on polluting. But are they actually paying that to the people who've got the trees? This is the question. If they're not, then who is keeping them accountable? It's just it's, stupid. It's, it's like all these wealthy philanthropists and their foundations that that take in all this money, and then where does it really go? Doesn't go to the doesn't go to uh, Haiti. That's for sure. Mm, mm. So it's so a good it's, video. It's, we'll link to that video. It's really good. Yes. One. Nice easy and explanation. He, he's also he's running for Senate in Massachusetts. On, I, he says he's only going to run once because 80% of a senator's time is spent on getting reelected. He's, you know, with with getting money and then making sure you've got people on your side. It's like it's like uh, academia. You have to get people to work with you. You know, you have to. You, they're they're working to get their tenure, basically. You know, if you look, if you were to compare it. So he said, so if I'm only there for what is it, two years? Basically, I will have put more work in than if you got the somebody second who's term. in there for six years, mm, right? Mm. So uh, I think one day, I think this guy would make a good president too. Mm, mm. But uh, he, he's not a politician. You know, he's a scientist. He actually invented email when he was 14. <laughs> That's what he says at any rate. <laughs> and, and it was a long time ago. You know, he went, oh, I just rewrote code from, from uh, inter-office memos. 
so that we could get basically he wanted to help the women get away from typewriters onto keyboards so that they you know they could do it so I was like dang wow he had, he did an interview recently with Tiffany Fitzhenry and they were talking about all this stuff and he tweeted out you guys liked my little diagram with the circles and stuff. What else would you like me to do? I'm like, do vaccines. You know, you want to do vaccines? You want to do this? So I just had this, it just it got me excited. So I thought, okay, this is great. Here's somebody who's really intelligent, really educated, and knows, all, understands all this stuff on a level that we but don't really get all the time. Speak it, right, in layman's and terms. Can, yeah, he can make you, he can get, so people can understand it, make it really clear. I bet, he, I bet he has a 22 in his numerology because that's what the 22 number is, being able to <laughs> grasp great things and make it into something that can be a hand, understood by humanity. Interesting. So, okay. Well, have a look cool. at those links, and, and I'm sure you'll enjoy them. Thank you for joining us. Like it if you like and all that other good stuff. Bye. Bye.